Hey everybody, today I want to cover uh, the different hand strikes that are part of your test for your black belt. We now are asking that you show evidence of power. So this evidence of power requires you to do it against bags or shields or targets and show us that you have the ability with these strikes to do damage and through this damage you are able to protect yourself. We are a martial arts that's designed for self-protection. You want to make sure that you're effective in these, in these striking that, that are required and you're required to be able to do. Uh, we're going to cover some of the basic strikes that you learn all the way through your karate training to some of the new types of strikes that are being requested uh, on your black belt test. One of the first things we'll be doing is just doing the simple punch and striking straight lines, how that makes power, how you make power for that. Uh, I don't really believe that this is your karate punch, this is your boxing punch, uh, this is your Muay Thai type of strikes. I believe your situation, where you are in relationship to him, where you are in relationship to an attack coming at you, that dictates what type of strike you need to use. Uh, oftentimes, we try to make every kind of situation fit the type of strike that you have in your, in your uh, toolbox. And you need to increase your toolbox to be able to adapt to your situation. So everything is part of our martial art. I don't believe this is boxing, and this is Krav Maga, and this is Muay Thai, and this is karate. If it hits someone hard, and it hits them at an angle of weakness that you need to hit them at, that's your martial art. So we'll be covering lines, how to create power for those lines, your different postures that you have, and your different footworks for, for those different uh, types of strikes. The first punch I wanna cover is just your basic stepping center punch. Uh, you often see it where you, you'll raise your hand, load your punch, and you step out and you strike. Uh, how does that play into a real self-defense? I believe your traditional karate is real self-defense. We just do it in an artistic form instead of an application form. The application of that movement is, is I want to do with my right hand strike and use my left hand to clear. Uh, the movement of this is not so much that you're loading as much as you're protecting, you're covering. Let's say someone's already reaching at you and they're reaching to grab you and, 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 and strike you. So they're already reaching to frame you or they might be even reaching to punch at you. This arm coming up is the clear. As it goes up, it blocks. The edge of my arm is going to block. I'm going to get my hand on the top of theirs and then pull it down. As I'm pulling it down, I'm going to be twisting the wrist which rolls their shoulder, and then I'm gonna be shooting my punch. And then instead of necessarily stepping and punching, it just depends on my range of getting to them, I might, because we're close, or depending on the range, I can shoot my punch at any part of that step. It might be at the beginning, and I step through and follow up. It might be pulling through, stepping through, and then driving my punch in. It just depends on that situation. But if we, this movement, working into here. So going against the bag to create my power, I would clear, strike. Again, from my head, clear, strike. And as I land, you can see I'm striking and I'm either tucking this arm down and I'm dropping my elbow to protect as I move in, increasing not just the punch, but a follow-up strike with my forearm on el and elbow. So it would be clear, strike, and crash into covering, and move it in. Working with either side, striking, clear, striking, and following through inside. The punch, the key thing to your punch is making sure it goes in a straight line. I'm going straight in. And the element of your power is your elbow to your fist. One of the problems that people have in punching is the elbow coming out. And we're gonna be talking about this elbow a lot and all these other types of punches. If my elbow comes out and I make impact early, this punch will crumble under the impact. 
for my body weight to transfer into my fist, it's going to go from my, my legs to my hips to my back to my shoulder. From the shoulder to the fist is where sometimes we lose it. We need to drive next shoulder to elbow. Elbow drives the fist out. So this elbow is driving into the hand. So it goes straight through the back. Clear, strike, cover, strike, cover. Follow up with the other hand. That's your movement of one, two, <clears throat> coming through. If we're caught closer, we may need to cover and strike at the same time. Now, in hitting a person, sometimes it's great with the knuckles. Sometimes we may need to hit with the palm of our hand. So one of the techniques on your chest is your palm will strike. And you're gonna be from either here, it could be here, it could be from here, it could be from any of these type of positions. So you need to snap your power from your legs, up your hips, into your back, into your shoulder, into the face. Just strike a screen in. As you notice, after I strike, I cover back up, I ran, and I would be able to follow up with my second punch on the other side. But the, again, it's a straight line, straight in, shoulder, elbow behind each other, straight through. I can use one, two palm heels, one, two, and come in. Crashing as I come out. One, two, and do a punch. <clears throat> Good? All right. What we're working on is, again, power. The, the ability to do damage. One of the problems that uh, transfers over to uh, a karate strike is the influence that your sport has on your self-defense. Uh, the benefits it has, sport has for your self-defense, is the ability to close the distance. It's extremely fast. But the disadvantage sometimes has is you're focusing on your power and extension. And the power and extension is to score and then fall through with just pure speed. In your self-defense situation, there's two things. One, we're much closer. And two, we want to hit with the power area. And the power area is usually about two-thirds of impact, two-thirds of distance through an impact of a line of power. So that once you make impact, you still have mass follow through. That velocity transfers to your mass and it still penetrates through. Some of the best resources for those types of punches is your boxers, because that's the distance they train in. They train close and tight. They work in this type of position. They work being covered up. Uh, they work on trying to knock a person out. Now, in knocking a person out, what is the goal? What are you aiming for? There's basically three ways you knock a person out. You can hit them in the jaw, which works on the nerves here, and then it's like a little switch, it turns them off. You can do a vascular where it hits the neck, like choking them, but with, the, with, the, with it a strike. It can be done with a hammer fist to the neck, it can be done with a punch to the neck. Anything that hits the side of the neck to so disturb the blood pressure makes them drop. And the third method is, is causing a concussion where the brain gets shocked. Uh, and each of those, are a little bit different. Uh, the jaw one can be done with pure speed. The neck one needs mass impact, and the head one needs shock. We're gonna be working on punching at mid-range and working on first the jab. Now, I'm gonna be talking about using the jab as a strike that does damage, not so much as a jab that uses for measurement, where you get a, a distance on a person and a distraction of a person and then you would follow through with your right hand. I'm talking about hitting a person with your, your jab. Hitting a person to do damage with your jab. Now, their footwork works a little bit differently to allow that to happen. They make a, a step and a pull. They never let their feet get long. They got to keep this rear foot underneath. So it's a step and a step up. A step drag, as they like to say. And when you do your jab, you want to get your shoulder and your elbow driving the fist forward you're through here and you'll incorporate that with your step your step comes in your step here one this protects you as you extend and your elbow will come down 
and you're, you're one line going straight in. You don't jab across. Even if you'll see some boxers fight with a very open position, but in their punches, are going to go from elbow to fist very hard and twist or you work from a more of a defensive position where you hide behind your jab and your shoulder in position through here either way this hand and fist and elbow and shoulder line up in the strike it's not going to be this way or this way it's not like you're knocking on the door this this is just more for distraction okay you're going to be here driving up so you're going to be launching with your footwork, hip and shoulder, launching to the elbow, elbow driving to the fist. So from here, boom, straight up, boom. Punching with this front hand. The hand will turn over. You'll be making impact around two thirds. So the, the velocity carries to mass your hand and the hand becomes a projectile. Don't try to drive your hand into them. Try to think of your hand being launched like a baseball or a rock from a catapult, boom, shooting straight out. Once you release the power to the hand, you let it fly. Incorporate the body behind it. Now, you're here. If your body is back, it bounces off. It bounces off. Roll the shoulder in, roll the hips in, and it drives it in. Boom! Through here. And pop from here. After impact, elbow down, re-protecting yourself, shoulders up, the traps protecting your jaw. <clears throat> from this position, it sets up the right hand. <clears throat> Two things are gonna happen. Right now, because I'm behind my shoulder, I'm going to need to open up my stance. I'll need to go from here to open it up. I can't punch across myself and expect to get mass behind my fist. I'll need to open myself up. Slight, slight shift over. Sometimes you step to the side. Sometimes it's just a turn. All right. You'll stay in. Foot comes up. As I deliver this, this knee, ankle, hip, elbow, shoulder will work together. The fist will go forward and everything goes up and in. So now, the same punch that you did in karate this way, coming in with a punch, elbow staying in, I'll be doing from this position. Not this way, okay, or this way, but knee, hip, elbow, or shoulder, and elbow all tucked down. And then I follow through, and the power drives from the elbow to the fist. So from the jab to the right. From the jab to the right. From here, step, follow through, and drive. Again, I'm hitting about two thirds. I'm hitting with maximum velocity and let my hand be a projectile. So when it hits, it should be like a baseball hitting a catcher's glove. Pop! And you feel your energy go through. From here to there. Nice and relaxed. One, two. One, two. Good. All right, oftentimes in, uh, in boxing, they give these types of strikes numbers and they reference them by their numbers. Uh, a front hand punch or the jab will be a one, a right cross is a two, and what we'll be doing next is the left hook is a three, and then a four is again the right cross. We'll be now discussing this left hook. Now, in boxing, it is a sport, a very combative sport, and the goal is to do damage to your opponent and knock them out. Uh, but with that said, it still has safety precautions. And through time, uh, they've moved the rounds down from being a crazy amount of rounds to 15, and from 15 rounds to 12, just to uh, make it safer. 
so people uh, don't get permanently injured or killed in the ring. And on top of that, they, they do safety for their hands and the hands protect the person that they're hitting. So their hands are wrapped in gauze and then wrapped in tape and then everybody has a standard that they have to follow and then they get inspected and initialed and then they put a certain size glove on them uh, and everybody uses the same glove and the same, same company and everything's equal and everything's uh, set to the standards of, of it being the realm of safe. Uh, with that said, that protection to not do as much damage to an opponent, but it also protects you from doing a lot of damage to yourself. And one of the problems with the left hook is the risk of doing damage to yourself. And that is, in doing this punch, it comes in a circle from, from the side and across, and it's coming to the head. And if they tuck their head down and you hit a forehead, and you're leading with a small part of your knuckles, you'll crush these. And this is the high risk of this particular punch. In the self-defense, it, it could be a great strike because it's hard to see through something coming from the side. It's often used to knock as a Sunday punch, the big old haymaker coming in. But in a strike itself, uh, a lot of professional protection people, those that do security work, often say they don't like to use a fist to the head. They may slap you or palm heal you and strike you to the head and then maybe punch you with a fist to the body. So uh, in doing this strike, make sure you're protecting your hands and practicing the power on a bag. Uh, as of right now, I have my hands wrapped as well as gloves on. But uh, in the street, it may change to a palm heel, or what a lot of people sometimes do is turn the hand over a little bit more. So instead of doing the hook with a palm down, coming across this way, where the little knuckles lead, they turn their thumb down a little bit more. And they hit more upside down, hitting across this way. Uh, anything from palm, near, sometimes palm up, never palm down, sometimes thumb down, palm out, hitting with the knuckles through here. So that it hits with the knuckles coming across and a little bit safer for you that way. Uh, you adjust what you feel. You can strike with a strong part of your hand and not do damage to your small knuckles. In doing this, it's usually a follow-up strike from a right cross. The right cross sets up this left hook really well. From what we showed you earlier, where you drip your knee and your shoulder and, you sh and, your, and your elbow is up, your hand from this position, now all this side is coiled. And what you're gonna do is almost duplicate this line that I did with the right to my left. And depending on where he's at, I always like to say aim to the center in a straight line across. Don't cut the bag in, in slices, cut the bag in half. So if I'm here, this line will be going across to the 45. If I'm here, it'll be cutting across from left to right. And you're gonna be turning your hips as if you're punching to that wall almost. If I was punching over there, but I'm striking through here. So I would, from here, rotate my hips. As I do that, lift the elbow come across, tuck the shoulder, and come around, elbow in line with fist, strike it across this way. So off a right cross, left hook coming around. One, two. Put in combination with a one, two, three, you jab, punch, left hook. Again, jab, cross, left hook. That'd be a one, two, three. The next step is to clean yourself back up with a with a, a right cross again, it would give, give that number of four. So you would go one, two, three, four. And in punching, I always advise to protect yourself right away. After you do your strike, rather than pull your hand back this way, I dip my elbows down. I use them as a cover, as a block, and if I, and in, a, in a situation where we're charging on someone, I use it as a strike coming in as well. So from here to here, from here 
to you. And then it, bring those elbows back down. And move it back out. Covering on the inside. So be one, two, three, four. Okay, the next strike I want to cover is your bottom fist, or sometimes I like to call a hammer fist because I just think hammer, just, ooh, I don't want to get hit with a hammer, sledgehammer coming at you. And that's how it's going to strike you. It's going to be in a circle coming around. Uh, you could do it with the lead side. It's, it can be done with someone coming from the side. It can be done if someone grabs you from the rear. You come around a strike. We'll be using it. I'll be showing it in a couple of different ways. The first way is from your lead leg, lead hand. You want to reach way back and you want to pull it just like you would be swinging a baseball bat or swinging an axe. And you follow through with it. It's going to strike through the center and you want it to not stop there. Don't, don't tap and come back. Put it through it. Put it all the way through. Strike it through. It's a very powerful move. It's very versatile. A lot of people use this strike extensively. They move in, hammer this way. As the person comes down, hammer down this way. Hammer across the top, come in this way. We're going to be doing from here and across. From your guard, just bring it up, straight through. From your guard, bring it up, straight through. One, two. It could also be done with the rear, rear leg of that. The striking hand from the rear, like a reverse punch. You reach across this way and strike. Come from over here and come around. It uh, would work as a follow. You go one, two, one, two, then across. You may miss and come through. Or you. You brace and hammer through and follow up from that direction. So, in combination, one, two, three, hammer fist. All right, this last. <laughs> okay, this last strike uh, is uh, is is a surprise type of a strike. It's a slap. Uh, it's one of your most effective street self-defense because it, in explaining yourself, it's not a punch that looks much more, more violent. It's a, you're just saying, oh my gosh, I don't know what happened. I just slapped him off me. I didn't want to hurt him, but he was, I was in fear for my life. And when you put this big old slap, and I've seen slaps knock people out cold, but it's in the application. The element is high velocity, odd angle, hard to see, the part of your hand you're gonna hit with, the palm, the open palm and edge of the heel of your hand, just like a palm heel strike, or you can cup it to hit the palm itself. And it's the target, the ear, the jaw, the neck, all those areas, and the follow through. You use your whole body in the strike, you'll come around just like we would do uh, our right cross or left hook, you can do a right hook type of motion. You wanna hit it as you're here and your arm is the follow through and you want to go right on through his head. You want to take your hand from one ear to the other ear. So in this strike, his head is here, your hands can be down, you come right around. You just go from where you are, shift the body, let it come around. It's not going to have so much of an elbow up as you do with your punches. It's just going to make a big slap on the side. You use your whole body in this move, you need to do a follow up. But oftentimes, this first move, they don't even see. It comes from over the shoulder into the face. It's the same thing you would have to be careful of if someone does to do a sucker punch on you. You don't see it. This is a little bit of a blind spot over here. So you would keep your hands below their shoulders. You want to keep it out of their vision and follow through quicker. Slap it to the side of the head. Boom. Slap it with the palm. The big slap to the head. All right, I want to wrap up with this last move. And this last move, it uh, follows really outside of everything we've done so far. Everything we've done so far works on the body spinning. Even the jab, even though the fist is going forward, there's a rotation to create your power going in. On the right hand, the right cross, I turn, I open myself up and, and let my elbow fall through into my fist. The left hook is a rotation of my body going around to the side. The hammer fist was a circle, big, huge circle coming around. 
and the last one we just did is that big slap. But again, it's all circles. In this situation, it's not circles. It's going to be a launch. It's a drive. And it's an important move to know because if he attacks you first, he's driving something hard at your face. If you uh, stop it and then try to strike, you may not have time to do the strike, or you may be taking a strike as you're doing a strike. You almost need to stop him and stun him and strike him all at the same time. And with that, that means both hands are going to go forward. Now, in one hand going forward, we can put our whole body into it, whether it's our left hand or our right hand, or our hook, or our right, or our slap, or either side, or our hammer fist. All of these have your body spinning. Here, this arm's coming. I need to stop it. I need to jar it. That means I gotta have power going this direction. His head is here. His other hand may be winding up to come through as well. He's one, two. All right, so now that hand's coming. And I need to hit him hard to stop him and possibly jar him to where I can follow up and do another power strike uh, after that. So what side do I torque my hips on? What side do I rotate my body on? I need both. And so where's the power going to come from? Where's the body going to come from? Where's the body gener generation of energy going to come from? It's going to come from the floor up, okay? You're going to have to like dive and, and explode. And, and it's like a leap coming in, boom, and speed. Speed of your hands going forward, the speed of your body weight going forward. It can be done with a palm. It can be done with a punch coming in. You can be jarring here, elbowing here. You can almost do it as if you're diving through a window, like I sometimes tell the students, this arm is coming around. I want you to think of it as like being a window and you're Superman shooting through. Your two elbows cutting at the same time. This one into the elbow, this one into the face, and both legs shooting through. You're jumping in. Once you jump, then you can follow through. Then you follow through with your torsion of your body. But you need to be able to stop him from the start. A complete, still jump. Still jump into the motion. A launch. A launch into your strike. And that concludes our seminar. I hope you get a lot out of these different strikes. I hope you start seeing these lines, seeing these power movements and how you create power and you practice all moves to do a tremendous amount of damage as if your life is depending on it and you can finish it with any of these type of strikes or the combination of the strikes. All right, thank you so much.